I mean, this this is worse than Lehman Brothers. My guess is Bankman may be arrested uh, within the next week, and it's not a small jail term. I think that's a 20 year plus jail term. All right, let's take a look. Token, token price performance. So this is just the tokens that the that FTX allegedly held. It's not gonna really give us too much of a picture, right? Ultimately, we don't know the cash the company's held. So this isn't the whole balance sheet. That's the first thing I'd say. What's interesting is you can see that the balance sheet is given by hours. I'm not even used to seeing balance sheets by days, but they close their book every hour, which is a really surprising thing. A lot of the tokens show up at midnight for some reason on the 8th. Not sure why. Now this is already after the crisis was well underway. So after the crisis is well underway, they have a bunch of chains here. These might be customer assets. These might not be. I don't know. Um, I don't see very big numbers here. I see a couple million here, a couple million there. This is I guess some kind of staked AVAX or something like that. That's the biggest number I see. That's 4.7 million. I see USDC on Uniswap of 2 million. Again, not very much at all. Um, uh, REN BTC, that's some kind of wrapped Bitcoin, I'm guessing. Um, we got another wrapped Bitcoin from 2 million. We've got DAI of a few million. There's 23 million of BNB, so that looks somewhat realistic. We have uh, another 8 million of Binance's stable coin, uh, 10 million or 11 million of Ethereum, which sounds about right, or at least more realistic. Um, 13 million dollars of USDT, 100 million dollars of uh, FTX token, a, a negative amount of FTX token as well, interestingly. 50 million dollars of Lido ETH, or ETH on Lido, or whatever that is. Well, that 900 million. So of the total sum, which is about 1.9 billion here on the bottom, which has dropped precipitously, you can see within hours, to 1.3 billion. And you can see the last frame this balance sheet has, there's a value of 1.3 billion of assets remaining. Now we know that there's an enormous amount of uh, debt, and this does not necessarily reflect Alnada, it does not necessarily reflect FTX, we don't know for sure, but assuming this, this balance sheet is true, which again, somebody could have just simply made it up. I would sort this by this column to sort of see um, what that dollar value uh, looks like. I mean, maybe I could copy and paste it, but it doesn't look too good. Um, 21 million of BNB still, BUSD. A lot of these tokens have dropped in value. As we know, this is Armageddon for crypto. This is really not great. There is a wonderful explanation of what happened on Twitter. I'll pull that up in a minute and show you. Um, somebody did a little bit of forensic analysis that showed that really what happened was Almeida blew up when everyone else was blowing up, but FTX was able, in essence, to conceal that blow up. That sounds uh, about right um, from looking at that uh, analysis. It looked pretty good. So I don't really see where all of that 1 billion is. It looks like 127 million USDC. That's quite a bit. Looks like some wrapped Bitcoin there. Um, I suppose, I trust that it, it, this does add up, but it, again, it looks, it's hard to tell at a glance without being able to add it up. So Tron, they have 10 million USDT seven. I'm just gonna look at anything seven figures or above. 304 million so far, so it probably is right. But the only question now is what is the source here? Um, now we know from uh, Coindesk and Semaphore that the entire, uh, I guess, now these are, these are, are these copied uh, over again? It looks like these are duplicated. Do you see that? Those are the same numbers. Same thing for Uni here. Spell is one, SMX is eight. Shib, a good old shib is eight. It should be zero, but you know, it's eight for now. RSR is two. Render, one of my favorites actually, two and a half. Interesting that they're in there. I think we knew that they were in there. Ren is 1.9. Reef is 1.5. I heard they were dumping that one. We're at 408 million just on those. So I think, I think this is accurate. Sometimes I just like to check and make sure that the numbers actually add up. You'd be surprised sometimes that they don't. Um, I remember I was in a deal with Barclays once when they showed us confidential 
information memorandum and the numbers actually didn't add up and I was stunned at uh, that and ever since then I I don't mind actually making sure that you know the numbers are what they are it doesn't take long um, and it gives us a good sense and now we can actually sort this and sort of see what it is since most of this is just one uh, a couple of big numbers there's a lot of empty numbers here uh, 47 million ether not much for, for a huge, I know individual people that have more ether than that, so it's not that much for, um, you know, a, for FTX to have just $47 million of ether it seems a little unusual, but again, this is an unusual time if we've ever seen one. Uh, ape, good old ape, um, they should mark that at zero. 1.8 for Aleph, Ave, 20.2. All right, so what does this add up to? Exactly what it said it would. Um, so the, that is 1.3 billion of FTX value as of 20 hours ago, 18 hours ago. Let's sort this uh, by column B, largest to smallest. Still FTX, which is the largest. I'm going to delete that because that's what one should do when you see FTX. And it looks like they have a billion dollars of these tokens. A lot of these tokens have dropped. I don't see any Solana. Uh, I wonder if that is because Almeida had the Solana and they sold the Solana, or they sold the Solana, but that is a big gap here. You would think you would see Solana. Um, don't know why that's not here. Very unusual. Makes you wonder again if, if this is a legitimate sheet. There's no XMR, Monero. So the first thing I'd say is Without a bailout, and this is really a dark prediction that I, I don't wish comes true for anybody, but without a bailout um, soon, I do think they'll, they'll arrest Sam Bankman. Um, this is a, a colossal... I mean, this, this is worse than Lehman Brothers. Quite frankly, necessarily, if we've had a fraud maybe this bad ever. I mean, Enron, it's up there with Enron, but this is really bad. Um, Binance is said to have now have walked away from the deal. Um, Coindesk has reported that they're strongly leaning. Let's take a look here. Binance is strongly leading towards scrapping the FTX takeover after looking at the books. We don't know how much cash they have. We don't know Alameda's balance sheet. But we do have, have reason to think that the liability here could be even larger than $6 billion, possibly as much as $10 billion. Now. Some of you folks don't know uh, the criminal justice system maybe as much as I did, but we do know the, the, the wallets containing the tokens are just a part of the asset picture. The other part of the asset picture would include wallets we don't know about uh, and then also cash. There's something up here and, and it, 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 it makes me wonder. There really is a lot of cash missing. Bankman was asking investors for money, we know this over the last few days. The problem with that is if you do that and you have any material omission, which I can tell you from my own experience, this is what I went to jail for, any material omission or any misstatement, you can go to jail. That's securities fraud. Now that sounds harsh, right? It is. That means if you're pitching, your company's falling apart, we need a billion dollars, and you say, why do we need a billion dollars? And you miss, you leave anything out. Not even if you affirmatively tell lie, but if you leave something out, that's enough to go to jail. And in fact, that's what happened to me. I had, uh, they, the government had investors take the stand and they said, well, wouldn't you have wanted to know, uh, wouldn't you have wanted to know fact one before you made the investment with Shkreli? And they said, yeah, I would have wanted, I would have wanted to know that. Well, of course, you always want to know everything, right? You, you don't want to have anything omitted from you. And they said, yes. And that was enough to convict me, even though, correctly speaking, my, my, my defense attorney said, well, you made five times your money with Martin. What's the problem? And they said, I don't have a problem. But the jury convicts whether or not there was an omission, not whether or not the person has a problem. Uh, that's not the law. The law is, did you make a material omission? So in the last week, alone, forget anything else, arguably SBF, Sam Bankman-Fried, made material omissions to these investors. Now, we don't know what he said or didn't say. All I'm telling you, I wasn't in the room, all I'm telling you is that the way prosecutors think is they say, well, in these pitches, did he sell, tell you everything? Now, let's pretend he went to Elon Musk. 
which I think he did, uh, for um, financing. He may have said, Musk, I need a $2 billion stat. This is you know, what's happening. There's a liquidity crunch. It's a great opportunity, et cetera, et cetera. No matter what that pitch like is like, it's impossible to include everything. Uh, and it's very likely he either omitted something by accident, which again, it seems like it's unfair, but life is unfair. <laughs> I know this uh, as a fact. Any material omission in a pitch is enough to, to doom you to prison, which prosecutors wield an immense amount of power. They're allowed to pull that card if they need to. And that's what lets um, government prosecute whoever they, they see fit. And I think that, that my guess is Bankman may be arrested uh, within the next week. This is such a catastrophic problem. Unless there's a swift bailout where everyone is paid one-to-one -one on their deposits, which it doesn't look like that's going to happen, assuming they're out of cash to honor deposits, because otherwise they would have used that cash, if they had a billion dollars of cash, let's say, they would have used that cash to pay deposits, and they, we would have never heard of this. So I assume they're out of cash in terms of fiat. The on-chain data reveals they have a billion dollars of tokens, um, which they could redeem investments for or sell for cash, right? Um, but we know they have probably 10 to $12 billion of debt. So the hole here is not 1 billion or 2 billion or 6 billion. It's probably more like 10 billion. And that means that investors, or I'm sorry, depositors, at best, it sounds like, and I'm just speculating here, we all, nobody has perfect information on this, but it seems to me like the recovery rate may be as little as 10 or 15 cents on the dollar, which is a problem. When you take investor money, as I showed you, you can go to jail even if you make five times or three times, and in one case, I think 10 times the investor's money, you can still go to jail if you lied. In this case, these aren't investors who take big risks. These are depositors. Depositors are supposed to be treated with the most holy kind of uh, hands where they're truly, you know, uh, their money's guarded. These are depositors that are not just going to get made whole and have been lied to. They're going to be. They're going to have been lied to and be made ten cents on the dollar. You put a million dollars in FTX, you may get a hundred thousand back. You may get two hundred thousand dollars back. I'm not sure, a hundred percent, but I don't think you're going to get five hundred thousand dollars back. To be frank, um, and that is a jail jail term. I mean, I don't see any two ways around it, and it's not a small jail term. I think that's a twenty year plus jail term from being on the cover of Forbes as the potential next Warren Buffett to now, in my opinion, and I'm make, going out on a limb and just making this prediction, uh, almost certainly um, going to prison, which is really, uh, really frustrating. So if you're at FTX, I don't encourage you to do anything illegal and consult your attorney first, but the world would love to see what are the, the liabilities of FTX and Alameda.